Welcome back to the Unplayable Podcast for another episode of our Big Bash series and KFC BBL 12 is just around the corner. On this episode, we're talking to Perth Scorchers wicketkeeper and reigning champion Josh Inglis, a player who has been integral to the Perth Scorchers' success over the last few years and someone who lifted the trophy last season. Before we get into that though, don't forget to sign up to BKT Big Bash Tipping. Pick the winner of each match this season and you could walk away with fantastic prizes. For example, if you're the top tipper, you'll take home 10 grand in cold hard cash. Of course, you may just want to play for bragging rights, so create or join a league and take on your friends, family, colleagues, or just randoms. Best of all, it's free and easy to join. Head to tipping.cricket.com.au and sign in with your cricket ID to get started. There's plenty to talk about with Josh Inglis too. That golf injury, Aussie Tours, PMs 11, how the Scorchers are going to go this season. So without further ado, let's jump straight into his chat with Jack Painter. Thanks, uh, Josh Inglis, for joining us on the uh, Unplayable podcast. Uh, It's good to see you back playing, mates. Um, We joined the last couple of weeks with the WA boys and the Prime Minister's Eleven. Yeah, I have. Yeah, it's uh, it's been really nice, obviously, getting back to some cricket after the injury. So, um, yeah, I think we had a couple of games at home back to back as well, which was nice. Um, so I got to got to spend a, two three weeks at home, um, which has been pretty rare over the last couple of years. But um, yeah, it's, the last few weeks have been uh, have been awesome. Yeah, how how has that been? I was going to ask you a bit later, but um, in terms of you know the next little period coming up, especially with the Scorchers as well, getting to spend some time at home, play at home when the last 18 months have probably been, a lot of it's been on the road for you. Yeah, it has. It's been a tough few years, especially for us WA boys, just with the border stuff with COVID and um, everything that happened with that. So, um, yeah, it's been it's been a bit funny this year. But, um, yeah, it's, it's obviously been really nice back playing cricket at the Wacker and um, can't wait to start um, the Big Bash and, and get back to the furnace. And talk us... Uh, through the through the hand, obviously very unfortunate timing. Um, you must have been swinging pretty hard that day with the bike to snap <laughs> like that. I always swing hard. Um, <laughs> no, nah, yeah. So uh, we just I think we played nine or ten holes. Um, I think just teeing off on the um, on the tee box for the for a par three. Um, I think it's about one one eighty one ninety. Um, hit a five iron chunk. Well, I chunked it a little bit. Um, ball still went quite far, but um, just felt like the vibration. It was almost like jamming in, jamming down on a Yorker, and yeah, just felt the vibration up the club. Sort of let go of it and um, looked down, and yeah, had a big, obviously a big gash out of my hand and um, and my uh, ring finger. So yeah, looked down and there's blood everywhere, and immediately you you think worst case scenario and I was like oh that's that's season done that's world cup that's big bash that's everything so um yeah thankfully there was there was no tendon damage and um got stitched up that that day and yeah I was back playing within a couple of weeks which was um yeah pretty good result how long before you kind of realized that it wasn't like the season ending kind of injury that you first feared was it once you got to the hospital um yeah so I, as soon as we we got out the golf club, um, back to the back to the hotel and um, spoke to the doc, and thankfully there was a, a good hand hospital I think in Sydney that was only five hundred meters up the road. So we walked there and um, yeah, got straight in that Arvo, um, went and had surgery. The I can't remember the doc's name, but he yeah he he opened it up, had a look in, made sure there was no damage to the tendon, and, and made sure it was all clean and. Um, yeah, just stitched me back up and, um, yeah, it was a couple of weeks and, and back playing again. And uh, have you got to the bottom of what sort of caused the club to, to snap like that? No, I haven't. No, I think and, and, and the clubs were only a year old as well. And um, I, I'd started to play probably every week, um, once or twice a week up until that point. Um, so I was, <laughs> I was getting better. I'd probably play off. Early mid twenties, I reckon. Um, but yeah, no idea. I think it, it, it must have just been um, just travel with them, um, hot and cold, being on planes. Seeing how some of the luggage gets thrown about by the uh, 
the handlers at the airport. So, yeah, who knows, mate. But, um, yeah, thankfully it wasn't too bad in the end. I had heard a uh, bit of a whisper that you had only started playing golf in the last 18 months with the sort of UAE. There was nothing else to do. Is that kind of how it, how it started? Yeah, hey. yeah. So I played oh, sporadically for the last three, four years. But um, obviously when, once I got named in the World Cup and found out the boys were all pretty keen golfers, I, uh, yeah, I went and got a set and, um, yeah, spent a fair bit of time over in Dubai and Abu Dhabi playing golf, which was really nice. It was obviously beautiful weather and get out in the morning and, um, yeah, there was plenty of golf being played, so it was uh, really good fun. Have you been back on the course since the injury or has it scared you off a little bit? I haven't, no, no. Um, I'm hoping to, to go and get some new clubs um, so next time I'm in Melbourne, I'm going to go and get some clubs and, um, yeah, hopefully uh, hopefully get over the yips. There might be a few uh, mental demons still there. I might start with a putter and work my way up, but... Um, now, I live near a golf course and every day I drive home and drive past it. I'm like, wow, that looks amazing. Like, I just, I actually really looking forward to getting back out again. Um, yeah, if I can get over that first swing. <laughs> and obviously, this uh, is probably pretty tough watch the, the World Cup following that, knowing that, you know, you could have been there with the squad and with the boys. Yeah, yeah, it was. It, it hurt a lot. Obviously, the, once it happened and I, I knew it was fairly serious, I was. Absolutely got it to be uh, to be ruled out the World Cup and um, yeah, obviously it didn't go to plan and we gave ourselves every chance. I think the preparation was really good. It's just obviously you lose that you lose that one game at the start by such a margin and um, you're trying to claw your way back. Um, obviously we had that rain affected game and if that well sorry the game that got rained off against England if that didn't happen and we win that game then we we probably in, into the finals so. Um, yeah, it didn't finish how we liked, um, but yeah, it, missing out on that, um, yeah, it hurt a lot. Do you know if there's ever any sort of thought to bring you back in for the into the squad for the Afghanistan game? Because you obviously played the next day um, for WA, and then sort of there was a couple of injuries around the squad at that time as well. Well, I think because I'd actually been formally like replaced by Greeny, I could only. Yeah, I think I could only come back in if there was another injury, but I think they all happened pretty late on. So um, it probably just would have been too hard for me to, to get over there and, and get in. Um, obviously, with lack of training and stuff and lack of game time um, in a World Cup. So, um, yeah, I think it, it just yeah the, the timings didn't really work out. What about the form at the moment? You hit, hit a few the other week for, for WA in that one day. Uh, um, you've been sort of... Feeling like you're batting well in, in the nets and, and sort of good to get some time in the middle? Uh, not really. <laughs> it seems a long time ago, that 80. Um, yeah, I've just, it's, it's been tough. I've just been um, here, there and everywhere, really. And um, just, it's, yeah, I found it tough to get a bit of rhythm in my game with switching formats. And um, I got called into the one day squad and was really close to playing that um, the last one day at the G. And, um, pretty much up until the toss, I was playing, and then Hedy made a miraculous recovery and smacked 150. And then that other, I was on a flight to Canberra for the pink ball game. So um, yeah, look, it hasn't it hasn't worked out how I'd like. Probably the last couple of weeks haven't got the runs I'd like, but um, yeah, I'm training really well and um, yeah, really excited for the big bash coming up. I've done pretty well over the last couple of years, I, I think, in in the big bash. So. Um, I'm definitely confident in my uh, in my T20 game in a minute. I think you've spoken previously about you know when you do get back to WA and the score, which is about you know wanting you know wanting to score runs because you know you've been in and out of the side, you know haven't played consistently as you, as you touched on. Um, have, what's sort of the mindset going into the Big Bash this summer? I guess you know in terms of you obviously want to do well every game, but you know trying to stay you know fresh and like um sort of relaxed i guess have you got sort of a bit of a focus on that no i think it's just well i think it's going to be nice that i'm starting the tournament with the scorchers so i've got a whole tournament ahead of me um which is really nice unless something happens and i get picked in the test squad but um for me yeah that's my sole focus right now so um that's all i can control how i prepare for the games and yeah my my mind's just on doing what the team needs me to do. Um, yeah, and analysing the situation that we're in um, every game and, and just doing my best to, to try to score some runs for, for the Scorchers. 
Do you know where you'll bat for the Scorchers yet? Will, you, will we see you opening with Faf? I do, but I, I don't want to uh, let all the other teams know, so I'm going to keep that to myself. <laughs> oh, you could let us in. Why not go out until after? Because, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, we've seen you bat sort of for Australia four and five, but obviously for the Scorchers, you've opened a, a fair bit in the last few seasons. Uh, what's sort of yeah. your preferred spot T20, do you reckon? I honestly don't mind, mate. Yeah, I've, I've done. I've obviously done both um, over the last couple of years. Um, yeah, there's there's pros and cons for both. But at the top, you get the field up, but you bet in the middle, you get a bit of extra time. And if you build an innings, you could obviously get a license at the end with that with that power surge at times. So, yeah, I'll um, depending on who I think Faf will obviously come in and probably bet at the top. But whoever else we get, um, depending on. Whether that's an opening batter or a middle order player will we'll probably dictate where I bat. And with the Scorchers are sort of looking back to back, fifth title in, in 12 editions of the competition. Can you guys do it, do you reckon? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, so much. Um, silverware, and, and we've done really well in this competition, and we're, yeah, we're extremely confident in the squad that we've got, um, albeit pretty young. Um, and we're obviously missing. In, we've got a few big outs now, obviously with with Laurie not being able to come over and and Salty being ruled out, and obviously Mitch having surgery on his ankle. Um, but we've still got so much depth there, and um, I think we've seen over the last couple of years some of the guys that have been sat on the sidelines. We've had Matt Kelly, Cameron Bancroft, Lance Morris at times not playing. So um, yeah, everyone in the squad's really hungry to do well. So. Um, and that everyone's had a bit of a taste of it as well over the last couple of years. So, um, yeah, I'm backing us all the way. And I think we play, let's see, we weren't at Optus last year, but I think we play really well at home too. So um, that's going to be important for us this year. What's it like, sort of, you've obviously come up through, you know, where WA's developed all this, you know, you know, great depth that you guys have got. What's it like, sort of, when you look across and you see, you know, guys sitting on the bench and, you know, last game, in the Shield game, you had you know Josh Phillippe missed out because um, you know you'd, you'd come back in and take the gloves. What's it like when you you know look over there and you see that depth in your life? Wow, you know these guys could be playing at any other state or any other team potentially. Yeah, it's it's really exciting, um, but we we know we've we've got a lot of internationals um, in our squad, and um, there's always cricket going on. There's injuries at times, so there's people coming. Coming and going everywhere, so you've just got to be ready to go when you when you get the nod. Um, even you mentioned um, Josh Philippi there and not playing last game, but some of the guys that are at home. We've got Darcy Shaw; he didn't even travel to the last game. Dave Moody, those sort of blokes as well, and and that's without Greeny, Mitch, Stoin, Sean. So um, yeah, it's really exciting. It's just I think we've got a really really good squad and um, cover all bases well and. Um, yeah, it's it's exciting. Come the back end of the year, we're we're looking to go all three all three um, medals again. And what about yourself? It's been a big year, you know. T20 I debut, ODI debut. Um, the next sort of Aussie T20 is not for a while now, and you know, so sort of has flagged that the World Cup was sort of his last stint. What's the next target for you, sort of going into into next year? Is it you know locking down a place in the ODI side, trying to get on that? India test tour because you've been on the last two test tours what sort of are you targeting yeah all of the above really um, yeah I think the, well I'm, I'm hoping they'll take two keepers to India and I'm the second um, that would be nice it's, um, I've spent a bit of time in India but not for a, not for a test tour and there's there's obviously some white ball cricket at the back end of that as well which would be really nice to be involved in um, so yeah that tour is definitely one I want to get on and, and the Ashes as well at the end, well, uh, next year. Um, that would be pretty special to be a part of as well. So, um, look, that's all obviously in the future and that's stuff to look forward to and hopefully I'm involved, but I've just got to take it. What's coming up next? That's the big bash and then um, and I guess we'll see what happens before then. What's sort of the message you've been, because obviously we're in, into the big bash window now um, and it's not sort of red ball, which is the next sort of Aussie, Aussie phase, I guess. Is it... You know, making runs for the Scorchers, that's that's good enough in sort of terms of getting you on that on that tour and, and that's sort of, you know, the how you take the form into into getting on that test tour. Well, yeah, I'm 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 not sure to be honest. There's obviously no red ball cricket before the test tour now, so um 
yeah, whether I don't think they'll pick, <laughs> they're not going to pick um, blokes on, for the test tour just on Big Bash form, but um, I don't think it will hurt either. So, um, yeah, look, I'm just looking forward to what's coming up and, and hopefully put some runs on the board, and that's all I can do. What about uh, there's a bit of talk about your state teammate uh, Greeny sort of putting his hand up for the IPL option? Uh, what about yourself? Have you put your name in? Um, unsure at the minute. Like I think, yeah, the deadline's pretty close. So um, yeah, we'll see. But obviously, with it being a pretty big year, and um, I think we're in. Obviously, if picked um, and selected for India, I think that would be nearly a two month tour as well. So um, yeah, I guess I guess we'll just see. Um, closer to the date. The county and hundred as well. Obviously, you mentioned before you targeting that sort of Ashes tour to get on that as well. Is is that a key part of the plan? Sort of, you had a good season over there uh, to the twenty twenty one. Is that sort of something you'd like to go back and do as well? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's always great fun over there. I've um, had a blast stint with uh, Leicester, and then a um, couple of years um, at the London Spirit as a replacement player. Um, obviously in the hundreds, so um, yeah, that was that was a really good competition, um, great experience, and just mixing with just with some different players really that have played in different competitions all over the world, new coaches. Um, yeah, it's just a great environment to learn and and get better. So um, yeah, any chance that I can get over, I'll I'll, I'll probably try get over there. Yeah, I was listening back to uh, when Mitch gave you ODI cap earlier um, over in Sri Lanka, and he said. Uh, one of the key messages was was backing your skill set. Just remember to keep doing that. Is that sort of the key, like learning you've taken across you know the last eighteen months with the Aussie Aussie squads? Just you know being able to back your skills at at international level is what's got you there. Yeah, I think so, and and that's one of the the huge messages in our team. And like Ron and um, well Finchy before when he was skipper, he wanted he wanted the boys to go out and play play their way, and that's that's why they got there. Um, that can sometimes get lost when you're in the in the heat of battle and and when you're involved in um, a lot of games, like you can you can sort of lose sight of that. So um, yeah, it's a really big thing for me, and it's really important just to be authentic to myself and, and yeah, play the way I play. And well, I got there for a reason, so um, there's no reason to change that. And captaining the PM's eleven uh, last week might have been two weeks ago now. Um... Have you done most captains before, and how did you enjoy that? And you're looking to do more of that in the future. Uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. Yeah, it was. Um, it's obviously a little bit different. You're obviously always thinking. Um, yeah, there's a lot that goes on. I haven't done it in a while, actually. I did. I've sort of done underage stuff up, all up until under 17s, and um, did a season or two of first grade. But that was that was probably six, seven years ago now. So, um, yeah, haven't, haven't done it for a while, but yeah, thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, I think once you get to that level, you don't need to do too much. Um, I mean, the bowlers that we had were really experienced, Ness, Steck and Jolly, Jolly Paris. Um, yeah, they, they brought all their experience and, um, and their knowledge with them. So you don't need to tell them blokes to do too much, but, um, yeah, just the sort of, it was pretty fun with the pink ball, just with it being a really flat wicket. You could be really um, inventive with your fields and and just try and make things happen. And, and that's what we did. We, we obviously declared um, to try and make a game of it and, and try bowl them out. And we, we nearly got, up, got over the line, which was nice. Did you get any words of wisdom from Albo beforehand or during the match? I did. He's, uh, he's a good man. He's a good man. He's pretty funny. He came in the rooms and... Um, yeah, he was happy with the tunes and in the on the playlist and the changes. Um, but no, he's he's a great, he's a good man. Um, he had a beer, I think, and uh, he was having a bit of a chat to a few of the boys. So that uh, was really good to meet him. And um, yeah, it was a pretty special few days. Sorry, mate, my catch. Get out. <laughs> Oh, all good. Um, have you got a have you got a tip for us this year for uh, the Scorchers of who might uh, have a breakout season or who who to look out for? Um, oh, geez, it's tough because we've got a very very strong squad. Um, I think just after off the back of what he's done in the Shield season this year, if depending on how long Lance is is in that Test squad, it'd be really exciting to see him. Um, play a key role in, in the Big Bash this year for us. 
Um, obviously, he's expressed pace, but I think his, his skills that he's bringing to his game now is, um, yeah, just growing every year. Um, his slower balls, his change-ups are, are really good considering how quick his fastball is. So, um, yeah, look out for uh, the wild thing. What's it like to face him in the nets? I, when, I, when they were playing the Vicks in that Shield game at the junction, they had the, the speed gun there, as you know, getting up to 150s. He was probably averaging 140. 45 around that mark, him and Jai were playing that game. What's it like a net session at WA at the moment? Yeah, pretty scary, mate. Um, I try to stay out of the way of Lance when he's bowling in the nets. Um, yeah, I think one of our – he was clocked at 152 in one of the games last season, which is, yeah, you don't you don't face very often. So, um, yeah, he's just he's just excellent. He's he's so scary, especially in the wacky nets with the pace, with the bounce. Yeah. Um, yeah, stay clear. I seen that video of him bowling to Greeny yesterday. Not sure what Greeny's playing out there. Get out. He's probably hoping for a nice, easy you know, state teammates, nice, easy, uh, easy net. You don't need to be facing that before a test match. What's um, obviously you've been away a fair bit. What have you seen from from Lance? Sort of this, he was sort of in the, in the side last year and played in that um, Shield final, but he's kind of taken his game to the next level. This year hasn't he? What have you sort of seen from him this year that's you know helped him elevate his game? It's now got him in the test squad. Yeah, I think it's just his control really. Um, he's he's always had that pace. It, like even two three years ago when he was I think three maybe when he was first contacted or when he first started playing, um, he's got he's just got the ability to to scare people. Like it's one thing doing it. You can bring him on and you can clean up the tail, but like when he can scare you top someone in the top five or six of the opposition. Um, it just changes changes the dynamic of the game. and um, Yeah, but he's doing it now with control. He, he's not bowling a, a boundary ball, two boundary balls and over. He's, he's hitting the stumps and then his bumpers right on the money. So, um, yeah, it's just, it's just that control that he's got now in his game. And, yeah, it's been excellent. Uh, beautiful. Well, thanks for thanks for joining me, Josh, and um, all the best for the Big Bash. And uh, hope, uh, you know, for your sake, the Scorchers can bring home back-to-back titles. Thanks, Jack. Cheers, mate. Let's see if Josh Inglis and the Perth Scorchers can go back-to-back in KFC BBL 12. Thanks for tuning in, and don't forget to click the link in the episode notes if you want to sign up to BKT Big Bash Tipping and you could walk away 10 grand richer if you're the country's best tipper. So plenty to play for, all the best with your tips and we'll catch you on the next episode.